Hey everyone, welcome to the Farm and Pastor's Wife. I'm so glad you're here. Hey, if you have missed the last few videos, you realize we have had an extremely wild and crazy weekend. We uh, helped my niece get married this weekend and uh, we fixed the reception dinner. It has been a busy, busy weekend. So today is very much all natural day. <laughs> Because I'm having to recoup as far as getting my house back in order. Because, you know, things go by the wayside when you have a big event. And so today's video is going to be very much vlog style. However, I am going to show you how I cook up a pot of green beans from fresh. I think I've shared with you before how I doctor up store-bought green beans. I think I've shared with you before how I can green beans. I think I've shared with you before how I cook up home canned green beans. But the way I do fresh green beans is different than any of it. And so, let's say you have a garden and you go pick a mess of beans and you want to know how to cook them up to where they're so really good and delicious. I'm going to show you that today. Or maybe you don't have a garden. Maybe you have a friend to bring you a mess of green beans or you go to the farmer's market. So you don't want to go anywhere. That's what the cooking is on today's video. But first, I have a little, I am so excited that today's video is sponsored. Y'all, when I first started my YouTube channel and it started to grow and I got the first um, <clears throat> a product that said, here, I'll send you a free product if you'll do a review. You know, I was so excited and I just did them all. And as, as my channel grew, um, I, I lost, I, I, I did not enjoy doing sponsorships or, or review products because I don't always like everything. Um, and, and it is much more important for me to be honest with you guys than it is to be a Pollyanna. And if you don't know I'm talking about a Pollyanna, that was a movie where everything was just, she, she just saw the good and everything. And I do, I'm a very, very positive person. But whether it be a restaurant review, a food review, whether I'm going to be honest, my integrity is much more important to me than being um, just giving somebody thumbs up, even if I don't feel that way. So, um, but when this company, so I don't do sponsorships hardly ever. And I've had some big names reach out to me. I've had um, Timu wanted me to do stuff and they were going to pay and everything. And I was just like, no, I, I no. But when this company reached out to me, without hesitation, I said yes. Because this is a company that has been in my possession, or, or their items, the products have been in my possession for 53 years. Whether it be my mom's possession and I in her household or my possession. It is a product I fully endorse, I love, and I am thrilled to bring to you a sponsorship from Rada Knives. Y'all can hear my sink. <laughs> um, sorry. But anyway, Rada Knives, and all they did was they just sent me some free products, and they're offering me a discount code for you guys to shop if you would like. So um, I thought I would share with you what they brought. Um, <clears throat> they brought sent me, they didn't bring, they sent me uh, their tomato slicer. And I love their wording. It's very country sounding. It says the world famous tomato slicer allows you to cut effortlessly and cut perfect tomato slices without squashing. <laughs> so you don't squash the tomato. And we'll demonstrate that in just a little bit. They also sent me their regular parry knife, which is by far absolutely my favorite in anything. I peel, I peel my potatoes, I peel cucumbers, I, whatever, apples, whatever I peel, I always peel with a pair of knife. I don't use a vegetable peeler only because I, I just don't, I don't like it. I prefer a paring knife. And so that's how I peel everything. However, let me read you that. It says, our regular paring knife is an all-time bestseller that fits perfectly in your hands. And I can attest to that. I absolutely love their paring knife, but they also did send me the vegetable peeler and uh, Bryant will love that because he, he that's how he peels vegetables is with a vegetable peeler. Um, it removes the peeling from any fruit or vegetable you put in its way. 
And so I am absolutely thrilled that they sent me these items. So um, let me show you their items. I haven't even opened them up yet. Uh, I have so many of their knives already, their stuff already. And, uh, but I don't think I have the vegetable peeler. I think that is one I do not have. Wow, look at this. Is that, that's great. Y'all, and these hold up forever and ever. Um, so we'll see if there's an easier way to get in them. Are they perforated? Um, let me grab a scissors to open the packaging with. I, like I said, I say no. In fact, I don't even say no. I just ignore the messages from all these um, places. Okay, this is the tomato slicer. Let's give it a try. I just happen to have a garden fresh tomato right here, a little small one. And so let me get you turned down and we will give this a try. Look, and I, I as a young wife and mother, I didn't I always, always reached for like the paring knife to slice my tomatoes. And I would always have to go in with the point first and then slice it. But you want something like this. So let's see, we're going to slice through this tomato. Absolute. Oh, you missed it. Let me raise it up and we'll do it again. Look at that. A perfect slice every time. The tomato slicer. So exciting. All right. And let's get you turned uh -huh. back up here. And we'll open up the paring knife, which, like I said, this, this knife works for me for so many things. And I love it. It is my absolute favorite knife. I have one that is older, probably older than, I know it's older than me. And look, there's paint stains on it and everything. But y'all, I love rotted knives. And when I, I can't say it enough, I absolutely love them. And I was absolutely thrilled when they reached out to me to um, offer me this just free product. That's all I'm getting is just these three items and a chance to offer you a discount code if you would like. Now, if you go to their website, you can request this catalog. It's shopping. They have all kinds of stuff, like all kinds, all kinds of stuff. They have knives in the, in the blocks, which I may be interested in. <laughs> um, tongs, clean, grill cleaning items, so many things. So, um, I would suggest I'll leave down in the description below. I'll also leave right here the discount code. I believe it's coupon 10. Uh, we will leave it right here and go check them out. And I think you will love them as much as I do. Um, you can go to specialty places, specialty knife places, and you'll usually have somebody set up. This is a top quality company and I am thrilled and without hesitation can give you an outstanding review because I've known them all of my life and um, unlike the restaurants <laughs> I visited on a trip recently I give them all high marks because they are absolutely wonderful and uh, you can trust me because my honesty is much more important to me than just giving somebody a thumbs up because I want to be honest and I want to be transparent and that's that's more important to me, and I can tell you with this company, they have my full endorsement. So, okay, I am going to clean this up. I'm going to put the packaging away. I'm going to wash these knives up. I'm going to eat this tomato. And um, like I said, today's kind of recoup day. So we're going to clean a little bit. We're going to cook a little bit. Hey, let me show you my stove. It's bad. But I'll tell you why it's bad. My husband has been so good to me. <clears throat> First of all, week, the week we got back from vacation, I was sick with an upper respiratory, like, oh, sick. And it knocked me out like crazy. Then, obviously, I coughed and pulled something in my back. And I've been, the next week, I've been down in my back. And then we've had the wedding this week. And so, but I have been on a kick, a kick since vacation 
of the little Hawaiian slider rolls and fried sausage. It's what I call sausage pull-aparts because you pull the bread apart and you stick the sausage in it. Sausage pull-aparts. And so my husband every morning fries me up two pieces of sausage and puts them in the Hawaiian roll pull-aparts for me. And but look at my stove. <laughs> look at the grease. Look at the grease splatter. Sausage is a mess making thing. Y'all, somebody sent me this shirt years ago, or a couple years ago, not years ago, but a couple. If you've watched my channel any length of time, you know I always say, and, um, anyways. So, I have a shirt now that says, and, um, anyways. But, I've just now been able to fit the shirt. So, um, <clears throat> I've had it for a few years and haven't been able to wear it. So, um, now I get to wear it. But anyway, I'm going to clean up. I'll bring you back. And um, I snapped, I've already snapped and strung the green beans. So all we have to do is wash them up. And then I'm going to share with you how we cook up fresh green beans. So let's get started on the beans. I have, these are absolutely beautiful beans that a friend of ours from church, um, he and his wife brought them to us, and they are absolutely gorgeous. I've snapped them, but I have not washed them yet. So that's the first thing I want to do is just give them a good wash. And, like, if I see any, like, that's not really dirt. That's just a bad spot. I'll, I'll pick, pick them out. But um, I like to just get some water, go in with my hands, and then I transfer them over, and I do this back and forth um, several, several times. So I'm going to work on getting these washed up. And as soon as I'm done, I'll meet you back over at the stove. So I have washed these beans until they have, until the water ran clean. Now these were impeccably clean green beans. There was no problem. So if there's anything on them, it is just an, a harmless blemish on the bean. It is not dirt. So we're go let me tell if you're not familiar with country terminology, and this may be actual terminology, but it's definitely country terminology for me. But this is what we call a mess of beans. It's a mess. It's just enough for supper tonight. And um, that's all we needed. And so this is what we would refer to as a mess of beans. So what I'm going to do is um, I may need to get a bigger pot. We'll see. In fact, yeah, I am going to get a bigger pot. Let me, let me grab a different pot. I want, I want you to be able to see this process a little bit better. So let me grab my bigger pot. All right, so I have a bigger pot, not because you necessarily need it, but I want you to be sure to see this. And I said process, and that made it sound like it's some big elaborate thing, but it couldn't get any easier than this. So um, we're gonna just transfer these. I'll use this, this, I mean, I'll just wipe that out. That's clean. Okay, so the first thing I want you to notice is the color of these beans. I want you just to take notice of the color of the beans. They're just normal colored green beans. Okay, so now we can use any oil of choice. If you want olive oil, if you want bacon grease, it doesn't matter. Um, you just need some kind. I would definitely use either olive oil or bacon grease or ham or something like that. But uh, uh, just for the sake of maybe not everybody liking bacon grease or not everybody um, feeling bacon is healthy, which is one of the best things in the world to me. But um, anyway, um, we will use some olive oil. So let me grab the olive oil. So back over here we go, and I am just going to put in a good little amount, a uh, tablespoon maybe, a couple tablespoons of olive oil. The main thing is we want to be able to coat everything. That may have been a little much, but that's okay. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my burner on. And we are just going to saute these up in the olive oil just as they are right now. Now, I want you to, again, notate the color they are now. And when I bring you back, I want you to notice the difference of color. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can take a picture real quick so we can you can see the difference. All right, everyone, I want you to take notice of the color difference. 
Uh, I'll try to put up a side by side of before and now, but look how vibrantly green it has turned just by sauteing it only in oil. There's been no water added, nothing. I've just sauteed it in oil. So now we're going to do a little bit of salt. And if you need to, if you're a sugar person in your green beans, I am when it's store-bought, but if it's fresh green beans, I eat them raw so I taste them and I know that they're good and sweet. I probably won't add any sugar to this, so I just want to salt them. If, if you want to add some side meat, now's the time to do it. And I'm just going to cover them with water. And we're just gonna cook them to the point of tenderness that I like them. So um, we will just cook until they have cooked down and they're tender and ready for us to eat. And that is it. So I'll bring you back guys and it's time to um, give it a taste test to see. I may need some sugar, I don't know. But um, usually with fresh green beans, I only saute it in the oil and then add salt, cover it with water, and cook it down. Now, we are southern through and through, and we like our vegetables cooked soft. <laughs> and so, um, they are not crispy green beans, but if you like a crispier, firmer green bean, you just stop it at the process of where you like the tenderness. Now, we will cook it to death, because that's what we do down here. But um, if you like a, more of a just sauteed green bean, you could actually stop it at this process um, or just cook it until it gets to where you want it. So I will bring you back when it gets to where we want it and, and bring you back for their full supper. So we're probably going to have an early, well, probably a late lunch, very early supper, what we call lupper, and I'll bring you back for that. I'm hoping to have fried okra and the green beans and a sliced tomato for supper. So, all right, we'll see you back when they are ready to taste. So we might as well go ahead and just do this whole supper and I'm going to go ahead and slice up the okra just so I can have it done and out of the way. And I'm going to use my new Arata Perry knife to do so. I've washed the okra. I'm not sure what kind of okra this is. Um, doesn't look like what I normally have. Now I like my okra cut fairly thin, but you do you again. I'm just showing you how we do things. And I'm just gonna have this done ahead of time <clears throat> before we get ready to, um, I need to wash my drying mat anyway, so. I'm just gonna throw this stuff on it. And so as you can see, I'm slicing it. I don't know what that is, a fourth of an inch maybe thick. So I'm gonna finish doing that. I'm gonna do all these okra. And um, yeah, we should be back shortly. And um, so not only are we gonna have green beans for supper, but we're gonna have fried okra gonna be delicious. Fried okra is one of my all-time favorite, favorite, favorite things in the world. Guys, I just wanted to show you again how wonderfully this knife works. I mean, there's not leaving anything behind. It is absolutely amazing. So here's our okra, and what I'm going to do is um, I, I want it to stay, you know, I don't want it to dry out, so I'm just wetting a paper towel. I'm going to lay that on top of it, stick it in the refrigerator until I'm ready. Now, a lot of okra that you may come across may be super dry, and what you can do in that point, because you want a little moisture on your okra for your flour to stick to and adhere to. So what I do in those cases, if I come across some really dry okra, is I just take a tablespoon of buttermilk and toss the okra around in a tablespoon of buttermilk and then flour it. But this, as far, unless it dries out between now and supper time, I think this is gonna be fine. 
I'm just going to stick this in the refrigerator and it's ready to go. Uh, all I need to do is to flour it and I use self-rising flour. So I'll bring you back for that. Um, I'm thinking probably right after lunch, I'll get this uh, supper together. And all we're going to have is green beans, fried okra, and sliced tomato. And that sounds like a heavenly supper to me. So I will bring you back in just a little bit. I'm going to do some laundry now that has piled up for weeks. I still haven't put away our vacation clothes, so I, I've got some work to do. All right, everyone. Well, the green beans, they have turned out beautifully. And so I thought, let's go ahead and kind of get started on some of this okra and get it fried up. It's almost time for, it's really just an early supper. Too late to call it lunch. So um, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I am going to take, I think it's plenty moist. I don't think I need to add any buttermilk or any moisture to it. But I'm just going to salt them really good and stir them around. Now, I'm going to get my hands dirty because I like to um, be sure they're broke apart and not stuck together or anything. Now, I get asked a lot, do I reuse oil? And let me just say, this is the same oil I fried the orange chicken in the other night. Um, it was clean. There was uh, this little bit of sediment in the bottom, so I just left it in the bottom of the pan and only poured up the clean I have jarred this up, stuck it in the refrigerator, and it has been fine. And I will be using that to do my um, okra. So that is a personal preference if you like to reuse oil or not. I don't mind it as long as there's not a lot of burnt sediment in it and so forth. So I think what I'm going to do, normally I would put this in flour, but I think I'm just going to put the flour in this. And I always, always, always use self-rising flour and never cornmeal. I am not a cornmeal okra person. <laughs> so, I only, only fry um, squash, okra, anything like that, um, only in self-rising flour. I don't put any cornmeal at all. I don't like it. I don't like it when I get it at a restaurant and it's got cornmeal. Um, so, usually, so therefore, because most people put cornmeal in their fried okra, um, normally I don't order it out. We did have one little restaurant here in Asheboro that had the best fried okra. And um, they retired. And I was so sad because that was like the only place you could get really good fried okra. Because everybody, everybody puts cornmeal in it. Now, if you grew up with cornmeal, I'm sure you love it, but <clears throat> not me. I want just flour and a little bit of salt and seasoning. So, okay, I think I have it tossed well in the flour. And so I'm just going to kind of wait to see when my oil gets hot and we will put it in and... Um, I probably should have used a wider pot, not such a deep one. Um, so we may have to do this in batches. Not sure, but that's okay. Um, it's going to be delicious. This is like literally just a country, country <laughs> supper. Green beans and fried okra and sweet tea and sliced tomatoes. I mean, it doesn't get much more summer country than that. And so that's what we're doing. Caroline and I are going to, once uh, Bright and I eat supper, Caroline and I are going to run to Hobby Lobby um, be because we have a um, hurricane or tropical storm, I don't know what it is now, headed our direction. And Thursday and Friday, we are supposed to get up to seven inches of rain. So I know it's early, I know, I know, I know. But listen, guys, we have a lot to prepare for. We have a little baby that's gonna be here in November. We have chicken stew to start thinking about. We have back to school to start thinking about. We have a lot of things. So I thought those rainy days would be a great day 
to maybe do a little bit of decorating. So Caroline and I are going to run to Hobby Lobby. Bryant is doing some uh, marriage premarital counseling. Um, he has a wedding coming up, and so he always does marriage counseling with them. And um, so uh, that's what we're going to do tonight. So um, I'll bring you back when the oil gets hot enough and we add the fried okra or the okra in to fry. All right, we're adding it in a little at a time. I don't want to overcrowd because I don't want it steamed. I like my okra crunchy, crunchy, crunchy. So that's why I should have used a wider frying pan, but that's okay. This one will work. All right. So first batch in, I'll bring you back when we kind of flip it. I just want it to fry right now, and then we'll start to flip. Well, guys, I didn't film the first batch coming out, but I did. I am putting the second batch back in. And be very careful because <clears throat> that grease is hot. I'll spread it around once I get it all in there. I'll show you what the first batch looks like real quick. Oh my goodness. That, I'm telling you, is the best fried okra anywhere. No cornmeal needed. What's in the batter? Self-rising flour and salt. And the self-rising flour, you may not, I just salt my okra just because that's what I do. But um, the self-rising flour actually has salt already in it. So if you don't want to add it till after you fried it and see if you need it, that's fine. I just usually know I need a little bit. I do like salt probably more than the average person. And you want to watch your oil. If you need to add more, you can. Um, I think I only have just a little bit left. I think I'll try to make do with this. But I'll bring you back when this batch comes out. There it is, just a frying up. I haven't had this all summer. So, like, this is like an absolute summer must for me. Um, the, another thing I haven't had all summer is I haven't had fried squash. So, we'll have to do that next. Or... Not next, but you know, I'll have to get that before the summer's over. Feels like this summer has just flown. Like, where did it go? But even though I'm talking about possibly fall decorations, doesn't mean that I'm done with summer. I will hang on to the warm weather as long as the warm weather wants to hang around because I love it when it's hot. All right, everybody, let's get this second batch out. Now, um, part of me wants to go longer because I actually like mine really good and crispy, but I'm going to get it out. Just because I don't want it to look burnt. But it wouldn't be. It's just the way I like it. But we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and get it out. I do like it nice and crispy though. Um, Bryant wanted me to try a little something on this last little batch real quick. Um, he wondered what a dusting of cornstarch would do to it. I don't think it would make much of a difference. Um, but we can give it a try. Let me slide it off the heat real quick. I'm not gonna turn the burner off. I'm just gonna slide it off the heat. I'll be right back. So I'm just gonna add it to the self-rising flour. We're just gonna give a little dusting of cornstarch. Maybe a tablespoon or two, and I'm just gonna toss it around in there. And I guess I'll need to get a different plate out to um, put it in so we can tell the difference. Alright, and I'm actually going to add just a little bit more oil 
just because I don't want that. Not a lot, just a little bit. All right, while that's coming back up to temperature, because I cooled it off a bit, I'm going to put the okra on this so I don't flop it down in there. And we'll give a little, yep, I think it's good. All right. fry the little tips, the little ends of the okra, so it's hard for me to get them all out. Okay, so we're going to spread that around. Let me get another plate out so we can tell the difference between these, and I'm going to put the stuff in the sink. While I'm waiting for the last batch to come out, I thought I would show you. I don't know if you can hear, but I'm going to try to see if I don't have a microphone. I've lost part of my microphone, so let's see if you can hear the crunch. Did you hear it? So crunchy. So delicious. Oh my goodness. And the only thing that makes that better is a big old slice of, well not a big old slice because the tomatoes I had were small but a homegrown tomato slice is what's going to make that really good. I'm heating the green beans up. I've sliced up some sweet onion because I like sweet onion with green beans, fresh green beans. And we're fixing just to have vegetables for supper and it's going to be absolutely the best supper I think I've had in a very long time. Minus the orange chicken because it was super good. Okay everybody, we are sitting down to uh, dinner. I have some good old sweet onion with my green beans because I love it that way. Um, do you want to try the two different okras? I've got them separated. Okay, he's, I, can t I can actually tell a difference. I did cook one a little bit longer than I did the other. Okay, and I believe you're right. That one's darker. All right. mm -hmm. Here's the, here's the non, this is just self-rising flour. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Mm. Really good. Delicious. Nothing wrong with that at all right there. Good Southern fried okra right there. Perfect. Want me to try the other? Yeah, try the other. I've already snuck a taste. It's a little crispier. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, I don't know if that's because of the cornstarch or did I fry it a little longer. I'm not sure. But either it's actually good. good either way. Perfect either way. Okay. A little salt on my tomato. Mm -hmm. Pepper on my tomato. This is a meatless supper. Yeah, he said, what kind of meat are we having? I said, uh, you don't need meat tonight. We're eating ve we're eating all green vegetables and a little red tomato. We could have had some leftover barbecue. <laughs> yeah, we could have. <laughs> so, how's that? So good. Beans are perfect. You put a little sugar in there? Mm -mm. No sugar? Mm-hmm. If they were like half runners, fresh green beans, non can, you don't usually need to add sugar. But if you do, you can always add it at the end and then just cook it a little longer. They're delicious. So good. There's one thing that she has that I don't. I don't like onions, it's a texture thing. 
I wonder if they'll give me any sugar tonight. Yep. <laughs> Alright guys. It'll be gone by then. Well you have seen us have a delicious good old country summer supper. And we're gonna say goodbye now so we can enjoy it and eat. Because <laughs> he has places to go and I have some shopping to do. So we will see you next time on the Farm and Pastor's Wife. We love you guys and appreciate you. Remember, the grease is hot enough. You can fry anything. And you need to try fried okra. It is so good. Bye, guys. Bye, y'all. <laughs>